What are we hey, I'm trying good. to think? <laughs> uh, Welcome back to the Game Punks podcast for the yay! seventh, <laughs> the, seventh reboot. There's a global pandemic. Mm-hmm. Game, Punks re- Game Punks reboot, exactly. Uh, um, <laughs> maybe we should Game restart Punks Reloaded. That. <laughs> Game, Game Pu- did I say Gay Punks Reloaded? That fits. Game Punks Reloaded. That'd be good. Everybody, it's Game Punks Reloaded. Wait, okay. and Game Punks Reloaded break. again. <laughs> Back again, again? Back again, again. Again. Again, 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 again. Over and over and over and over. You'd think a quarantine would mean we'd be pumping out episodes on the daily, but apparently no, moving uh, is hard. No, apparently not. Well, life life catches up with you fast. Moving is fucking difficult. Navigating a pandemic is difficult. Uh, trying to catch whatever whatever little like crumb of employment you can grasp onto yeah. for the uh, CPU. And then runs j- out. I mean, I mean, I did spend most of my quarantine playing a lot of uh, very good games. And that is my telephone that is in my room. That is not my cell phone. Amazing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I spent most of my quarantine playing a lot of games. Like, I bought... I, I think I've, I've, I've purchased so many games over my quarantine that my Switch's um, card is almost full of digital <laughs> purchases. We got some so catching I'm gonna up to, to buy, do. I'm going to need to buy a new one soon. But... Um, yeah, needless to say, it has been a very healthy gaming quarantine for me, at yeah. the very least. I might not have been collecting uh, <laughs> collecting cash at a job, but I was getting coins the backlog. in Mario. Yeah, the backlog is clearing out. It is, it is, actually. And I've played a bunch of games that I didn't even have in my backlog that have uh, just kind of miraculously come into my life and left me with something very substantial. Yeah, that's the important So. Yeah, it's been a it's been a really good quarantine for me. Uh, what have you? Yeah, yeah. Let's start with you, Ben. What have yeah, you been playing? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, like I said, I moved, so shit was a little wonky for a bit. Uh, but I've mostly been playing fucking fighting games, honestly. Uh, mm-hmm. The Steam sales that have happened over the quarantine have oh uh, yeah filled up my Steam library. Um, I have they Persona sure Four Golden, have. which will be the first time that I play Persona Four. Uh, for more than two hours, I think. I've never actually beaten Persona 4. I already know who done it, but the adventure up to who done it, I'm unfamiliar with, and I heard that Persona 4 Golden is the actual, uh, like, way to play that game. Okay. Um, so I got that on Steam when it came out, like, last week. Uh, I think I'm gonna You've stream been enjoying it. it I think so I'm far? gonna stream that. I haven't touched it yet. Um. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, okay. But... I think it's my... It's, it's... I'm, like, one of the few people hiding in the corner of, of, of like, the, the this SMT forums going, fuck Persona 4. Yeah, fair enough. I I honestly do not fucking like that game. And it, it almost has nothing to do with the gameplay. It's, like, everything to do with the aesthetics and, like... Because I think it's, honestly, the tightest a Persona game has played. Uh, even more so than 5, in my oh, opinion. Okay. I think for just for the combat, I think it's very well, smooth. It's not clunky at all. That's nice. Because uh, I really it, it liked It feels five, very modern. But uh, three, three's a rough trudge sometimes. Three, three I, I like, I think, because it reminds me of older... I feel like Persona 4 is the game where Persona started feeling less like SMT and more like it's very much its own thing, very separate from SMT. Because Persona 3 still has, like, a lot of the... I guess, like, a lot of the the vibes and theming that the previous SMT games have, like it's very, uh, very much kind of cut from the same cloth as something like Nocturne. Okay. Yeah. Even though it is oh, a little, uh, it's a little a less, um, my door. Oh, just a little, uh, visit from a mystery man. I wonder who it could be. <laughs> Sorry about that. My uh, superintendent knocked on the door with a delivery that they carelessly threw at the front porch. Wow. Are we going to get a real-time uh, audio unboxing? Yeah. Oh, it's just, uh, it's my bath mat. Oh! Uh, it's the, uh, is it a fancy bath mat? It is. It's the, uh, the Overlook Hotel carpet. The diamond one. Oh, that's fucking dope, yeah. actually. Holy shit. <laughs> nice. I treated myself. There we go. That plastic shit That's out a of here. very good treat. Housewarming gift from yourself to yeah. yourself. Yes. There we there are. We well, that's that. That was supposed to get here in, like, three weeks still. Nice. Okay, so pretty early. Yep. 
and they just threw it at your fucking, fucking door. Thanks. Uh, what is it? Intelcom. Fuck you, Intelcom. By the way. <laughs> Intelcom fucking suck. I have to deal with them at work, and they're Dude, I, some of the most I some of the most careless them as a people. bike messenger. No it's way. Horrible. Anyway. We, yeah. yeah, Intelcom. I, I mean, sucks it's dick. funny too because I think even uh, back in the days of Super Best Friends, they they shit on Intelcom. Uh, <laughs> it's a well-known horrible delivery service. Uh, if no one's home, they'll well, just throw your shit wherever the fuck they feel like and take a picture of it and send it to you and be like, "There it is." And you'll be like, "I'm at work, they... and that's a garbage can." Thanks, yeah. you fucks. Anyway. That's really and fucking that usually funny. sucks okay. because that'll be the uh, dispatcher being like, "Oh, just leave it at the door," and you're like, "But," and they're like, "No, just leave it. We're not coming back." And you're like, "But okay, <laughs> fine. I guess I don't have a choice in this. It's uh, that's a total managerial uh, choice." Yeah. Wow. Those guys are fucking bastards. Yeah. Jesus. And they pay like shit. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> where were we? Games. Anyway, fighting the games. Persona Four, fighting games. Yes, fighting games. So yeah. I got, uh, I bought myself Tekken Seven when it was on sale. Um, okay. A dear friend of ours got me uh, Soul Calibur uh, with the Two B DLC. I guess Season One DLC. Oh, uh, so very I touched nice. that a bit. Uh, I've been mainly focusing on them's fighting herds and Power Rangers uh, Battle for the Grid. However, um, and if I'm being honest, I've. F- mostly been focusing on power rangers battle for the grid not to say that them fighting is herds is awesome. bad uh it's just uh power rangers is, is it's just marvel it's made by a team of people who work on marvel games uh you know it's yeah they... and it it feels like i i guess the the biggest the most complimentary thing i could say about the game from the get-go like without going too much into how much it caters specifically to me as a power rangers fan is that of all the fighting games they chose to rip off it was a versus they thought mvc it was mvc2 yeah. so so they chose a really good base kind of style of fighter uh, it's, for their it's game it's amazing it's so fun um like the thing too is like you know a lot of fighting games have kind of these combo systems where like I'll take street fighter 5 where it's hyper balanced so high level play uh you learn your shit and that's the shit that you're going to be seeing the same character do that one thing uh depending on like the matchup and all that shit right but there's like an optimal Mm -hmm. way to play each character and the characters that are low tier don't get played whereas with power rangers uh specifically uh like it's very open-ended you can get fucking crazy custom shit like i'm learning new combo paths every single time i play pretty much and then it's Mm -hmm. just jumping in the lab and like memorizing them and getting that muscle memory down but like sometimes you'll be playing and like you'll try something new and your combo goes like 10 hits longer than it ever has and you're like ah we're going to the lab for that one we're going we're going in it's it's just super fun um my team right now is tommy jen and uh fuck the yellow pirate power ranger girl Oh, uh, yeah, from uh, Super Mega Force. Yeah, I think so. or, yeah, something uh, like that. Go Kaiger also. Yeah, but the uh, Japanese fucking version. It, I forget her name. Yeah. Gia. Yes, yes, it's Gia. Gia. Her it's name Gia. is Gia. Uh, so, yeah, it's Jen, Tommy, and Gia. And, uh, Very nice. Is, it's just fun. It's a powerhouse. Uh, oh God, such a good game. I could go on for, like, forever, but I won't. I won't delve too much into it. Uh, the like <laughs> the weakest point is honestly the visuals, and if you can get past that, it's like one of the funnest fighting games I've played in a really long time. Yeah, uh, it's it's like ten times a more rewarding fighting game experience than like Street Fighter Five. I don't know MV Street Fighter MVCI. Five MVC Infinite. Uh, MV, no, actually, yeah, like... MVCI uh, to its defense plays pretty much as good as battle for the grid uh yeah but it's not as rewarding a game no that's it it's because the, it's and such it's, a letdown it's, it's, it's you such know a it's how much how much more expensive and looks almost worse yeah it, it's kind of I, like it's crazy how good the bang for your buck for battle for the grid is because all the dlc is free uh no no, no, no not all of it uh, you gotta get Oops. season passes and stuff um depend- uh, if, unless you get like the deluxe edition then it just kind of comes with uh what's yeah that's see, that, th- that okay i suppose yeah. that's a different thing though yeah okay well i mean that's still pretty but, good. yeah because i got the base game uh out of curiosity when it was on sale i think it was like uh it was cheap as fuck uh i, I was like oh i'm just Ooh. i'm curious it looks like fun 
I didn't have any of the DLC characters because I just got the base game. I played like yeah. five minutes of the base game and was like, all right, we're getting all the DLC. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's actually really reassuring because I, I, I need, I really needed that extra push to pick it up. Just I'm Power Rangers devotee. I literally own more Power Rangers shit than I have any right owning including a lot of the seasons on DVD and the entire current run of the Power Rangers comic from Boom, every single trade paperback and, like, the coffee table book they did recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch of the figures. I fucking love Power Rangers. Oh, yeah, I wanted to ask you. uh, I need to get this shit. Ranger Hunter, that's a comic book thing, right? That's not in any show? Yes, the the Ranger Slayer. Yeah, Ranger Slayer. She is a character from the... uh, the uh, well, it's, it's... the 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 most recent yeah. kind of the most recent big arc in the comics yeah. that they did uh it's the thing that actually a lot of the stuff in battle degree including lord, lord draken yeah, is yeah. also from that but yeah they're uh it's an evil version of kimberly from another universe yeah, who was basically recruited by draken who's an evil version of tommy to hunt down and kill all the remaining rangers across the morphin grid yeah, all it's right. really really fucking and good. like see that that builds the excuse for the game even because sometimes you're yeah like, why would tommy be oh right portals <laughs> yeah por- portals and like there's a bunch of characters who I'm not going to get into the extended Power Rangers multiverse. There's a whole podcast on Power Rangers I could actually potentially do. <laughs> but um, regardless, yeah, Battle for the Grid is really an underrated it's, game. It's I need amazing. To I'm kind of bummed that. it's not at Evo. The netcode is also amazing. I've only ever had... Uh, it has a problem where sometimes matches will straight up just drop out of nowhere. Ooh, okay. Uh, so that kind of sucks. But in terms of netcode, in laggy matches, I haven't really had any issues. The only issue... Oh, that's uh, The good. only other issue besides the random match drop is um, sometimes you will start... Like, for me, anyway, this is a pro. I don't know if it's a all-around problem. I haven't really looked into it because it's not that big a deal. But the first match mm-hmm. that I play, usually, the load-in into the match... I will already be getting hit by the other person. Like, it'll skip. Yeah, Ooh. so it's a little... Eh, but that's only ever, like, the first match, and it's super rare. So apart, apart from that, it's just, like, a hard recommend. It's, yeah, I can't I can't praise it enough. I think, honestly, in the last... Uh, because it came out in 2019, I think it's probably mm-hmm. the best fighting game that came out in 2019. Uh, for, per, like, that, for, folks? Me, for me, <laughs> in terms of how it feels. Because MK11 came out in 2019. Great game. I just don't I, like I think MK11. MK11 is wonderful, but uh, guess what? It doesn't have a switch port that works. No. So and it, I, <laughs> NRS <laughs> games just feel bad to me. Like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it just it's it. it feels I I, I like Injustice too. I love the way the Injustice games play, but they are clunky games, and they're like every character feels like they weigh a thousand. Yeah, pounds that's that's my main problem. Like, uh friend of the podcast let me his ps4 and m or uh mk11 also and uh for like a weekend i think and they're like i'll oh, just bring it back to on monday or whatever mm-hmm. and i was like okay you'll while want I was to playing death stranding. <laughs> no, while i was playing death stranding but they 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 let uh, me the copy of uh mk11 also and i i played okay. like the tutorial of it and was like nah i'm good the thing with the thing with nrs fighting games is that a lot of people who go into them they go for the story are yeah they go well they go for the story the narrative and the characters which are all excellent yeah, yeah. i'm not shitting but that it's just the the thing wise. that i personally like about them is that they remind me most of a game like samurai showdown where it's not really about I guess it's it's about kind of parsing what your opponent is going to do and then trapping them yeah. in a sequence of combos that quickly dispatches them, which is a very different kind of fighting de- fighting game than most 2D yeah, fighters. Yeah, it's, it's less traditional but, than... Yeah. Uh, it's very... It's, arca- it's still it's very, very arcade Yeah, I, I understand what you're going for. Very arcade uh, It's I, I, I understand why people don't like them. I personally actually, I, I enjoy them, but yeah. I understand Like, I'll play, I'll play MK if I'm out at uh, Arcade MTL, uh, you know, whatever, but I'm not gonna... Like, mm-hmm. MK11, I was kind of interested in, but touching it, I was yeah. like, I don't think... I don't think I'm into it as much as that. Plus the the full crypt like drama that was there and oh my god the, the DLC the being crypt of the capital K yeah. sucks with the capital S. Holy yeah. shit, it's so bad. But uh, I it's actually remarkable how bad it is. Yep, ball dropped. 
at least uh, the Mortal Kombat got a good movie. Yeah. So that one. So we can at least say that movie kicked we ass. We can forget about the other two though. Oh no, you meant the animated. Nah, movie. those no, those movies, those movies fuck. The 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 uh the animated movie is good yeah, too, yeah. but also so so are the two live action yeah. ones. Those movies kick ass. Isn't there three live those action movies? The best movies? video game movies. There are. The first one's good. The first one's really three? good. I I'm not sure. I know the first one's really there are good. Th- three of them? I don't know. I I don't. Damn. I thought there were three, but I could be wrong. I could be super wrong. Oh. Uh, whatever. Anyway. Wow. I, I, I'm pretty sure there's just two and the animated. But the animated one fucks. I watched mm. it. Watch that movie. It's very good. It has extremely nice animation. Yeah, I saw the trailer. And it's extremely so haven't gotten violent. Into it yet, but I think I might do that. Uh, oh, no, I'm streaming we, tonight. We could watch it at some yeah, point. I have it. We could do that. Do a commentary <laughs> trick. <laughs> yeah, that would be wonderful. That would fucking be wonderful, actually. And that movie's really good. Uh... But yeah, so I mean, you have a lot of fighters, Power I guess. Rangers Any other fighters? For the grid. Uh, I touched Tekken 7 and Soul Cal a bit, but like not that much. I'm probably going to get back into that uh, at some okay. point now that my schedule is a little more settled and like I can actually play video games again. Um, mm-hmm. Other than that, I've been streaming. What have I been streaming? Uh, I played Mega Man 11 for the first time. You were there. That was, that was yeah. rough. <laughs> you were having a hard yeah. time. But uh, You should play it oh, on yeah, easy I next played, time. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Streets of Rage <laughs> 4 uh, also <laughs> kicked my yeah. ass. I, I still got to beat that. Uh, very good game, though. Very happy with how that turned out. Um, I can't wait to play it's, that. It, it does remain a Streets of Rage game, so some of the hitboxes, you're kind of like, fuck, <laughs> what? What am I supposed to... It's good to think, Good to know that things haven't changed. Yeah, it kind of feels like you should <laughs> play it two-player, honestly, because um, playing it okay. alone was Okay, no, that a, sounds like fun, actually. was a fucking, yeah... Check that out on my stream archives. You want to see me get pissed? Um, I think I watched a little bit of that, and yeah, you were not happy. <laughs> it just yeah, <laughs> it, it got rough. Um, but if not, I started Dead Space yesterday uh, for the first time ah! ever, and holy shit! You've never played Dead never Space. Never played. I like. I know a bit oh, about okay. it. I knew. I know to shit the bed a bit, but not too bad. Just like it's kind of like ah it's not as good as one it's more action oriented but whatever and then three shit the bed really hard from what i remember hearing uh but no one pushed one uh as hard as they should have to me i think I when agree. it came out um cuz holy fuck that is a g- good fucking horror video game right there i yeah it is the tension was constant i it does I guess it does like jump scares, but it does it really well. Where the thing you're expecting, I I, I never felt that the jump scares in Dead Space ever felt cheap. No, that's you it. know it's it, like because the tension... because there's so much genuine pervasive horror in yeah. it. Yeah, and like that a jump scare once or twice never feels unearned. No, exactly. Because the atmosphere is already so tense and upsetting. And like the jump scares aren't like generally like thing pops out at you it's like oh you're in a hallway things coming towards you thing pops out behind you you didn't realize the thing was behind you and then it's like hey what's up and you're mm-hmm. like oh god uh. uh but yeah no very good game i'm continuing that tonight around eight uh, i'm gonna start that up and i'm tr- planning on doing a a hyper long stream tonight for that because like i want to i want to uh, get in that get all up in it uh but yeah um yeah, get all still up in super that early i only did about an hour and a half i think last night uh, after okay. succumbing to fucking resolution resets everywhere and like like even OBS <laughs> somehow the resolution got switched to 480p so my stream was just Oops. super long and looked like it was supposed to fit on the screen of a Game Boy Color. Oh it, shit. Yeah, it was weird. It was super <laughs> weird. I was so confused and angry for about 30 minutes. Like the first 30 minutes of the stream were me like I don't know why this is happening. But anyway, um oh boy so yeah uh that's gonna be the main focus i think for a bit i'm still gonna touch on Mega Man 11 because i do need to get through that and streets of rage 4 because i'm almost done mm. that but uh yeah and uh i've actually recently picked up the silent hill dlc for dead by daylight because that's the oh yeah i heard about that that could get me back into dead by daylight i really liked my dead friend by my friend neil is very into dead I by like daylight it, but i feel like it just gets so repetitive it's kind of like um it feels kind of like the Call of Duty uh, multiplayer experience that I had. Oh, where like, okay. okay, yes, I'm having fun with my friends, but we're doing the same thing every single match. You have it's the same kind of yeah. fun over and says over. Says man who plays fighting games, I know, but whatever. I just like it's just 
Well, a fighting game experience, like mm-hmm. fighting a fighting another opponent there, in a fighting game who potentially least. uses a completely different character is such a different experience yeah. from playing a you know an asymmetrical multiplayer game that effectively plays the same yeah. way each time. But uh, different out different outcomes certainly, but yeah, yeah. you know the same well, I mean, gameplay, like, same fourteen maps. Fighting game two is like you get the same maps and then you're just kind of like do combo or do this co- like it kind of it's i get the parallels but whatever it's it's not the thing that i like in my video games of yeah like i don't like doing the gens i don't like whatever but the silent hill shit mm. got me back in um it's the only I mean, dlc for dead by daylight that i bought <laughs> so oh really yeah, I, I i got the base game for dead by daylight i played i think i have like 80 hours in dead by daylight something so like i played enough of it to know okay. uh and i do like it i do enjoy it it's just it's not my main game right like i'm gonna go to fighting mm. games uh but the silent hill shit yeah. got me back in and you know what i really want since dead, dead by daylight got me thinking about it again just give me a good horror fighter again oh uh, well there was a give me a give me a licensed fighter. a licensed horror character fighting there was game. that one uh i'll send it to you after uh i think it's i want i want a fighting game where you could fight pinhead and Freddy. yeah that, that exists that's it's not I licensed. I want to play that. Uh, I think their names are changed <laughs> a little bit. Uh, I can't remember, but I'll I'll send you I'll send you the uh, thing. Bolthead. Yeah, yeah, something like that, right? But it's clearly Pinhead, and he has a whole Frank moveset. Frankie Kroger, and it looks like uh, early Mortal Kombat games too. Okay, Justin Voorhees, <laughs> Jason Voorhees, Jason Voorhees, perfect. I'm into it. Betty Kruger. <laughs> Betty yeah, Benoit from Frankie Kroger. Frankie Kroger. <laughs> Frankie Kroger. Uh, instead of Michael Myers, Edward Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, that was and not then a Shrek Bill reference. Cosby. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> just put him He's, You know, you just put him <laughs> in. He's scary yeah. enough. Uh, oh, that's pretty good. Anyway. I, I need to play that. That sounds like fun. Uh, I guess I'll check that out. Yeah, I'll try, I'll try and find uh, how to get it. Because I remember, I don't think it's an official thing. I don't think it's on Steam or anything like that. I think it's like uh, uh, one of those... One of those fun downloads where you gotta go to <laughs> you gotta go to the cost. Bay of Pirates or some shit. I don't remember. Ah, uh, okay. Remember. But uh, yeah, it exists. Um, Sounds like a lot of fun. It seems cool. I haven't touched it, but I know it exists. Um, Dead Space. What else have I played? I don't know. <laughs> I think that's. I, I mean, think I'll that's go basically then. it for me. <laughs> like, uh, it's been mostly fighting games, honestly. Like, Evo's around the corner. I'm very excited for that. I feel, I feel like during the pandemic, you you got you went a lot of people went back to stuff that was comforting. Yeah. Because when the world around you is so is so rapidly changing and having to adjust is to new status quo every off. day. <laughs> yeah, uh you know, because of everything that's happened from the the COVID-19 epidemic to the George Floyd protests, just a, a rapidly changing po- socio-political landscape. Mm-hmm. You know, people are nervous and they're scared and they're fraught with kind of uncertainty. Insecurity and so they they yeah, uncertainty and insecurity, so they return to the things that they're comfortable yeah. with. I've certainly very much been doing that. I think uh, but, anyone uh, in their right mind has to do. Yeah, yeah, honestly. Well, if if not in the right mind to keep their right yeah. mind. Because it's 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 hard to it's it's hard to take all of that in at once. I mean, once, yeah, no, there, I, there's I for sure days where I'm not. just like I'm not even going to go on Twitter today cuz I don't yep. I don't I can't. I can't. Exactly. It's and it's it's cra- it's crazy to I guess to to have to sit back and feel like you can't do anything when shit like this mm-hmm. is going on. It's it's hard to it's hard to feel useless in a even, world. You yeah, want even to, signing to petitions and like donating, even if it's like the best you can do, just kind of feels. It almost feels performative. It feels, it feels hollow at times. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it does feel performative. And it like does, just... and it's it's not because real real stuff happens mm-hmm. from donation, but it's hard for it to not feel. Yeah, that. exactly. It's hard to like cement yeah. that thought. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, everybody's returning to shit they're comfy with. Uh, in my case, lots of JRPGs. Hell yes. <laughs> A lot of them. Um, I've beaten every one of, I JRPG guess, ever. I have <laughs> played. Okay, so my original roadmap was going to be completing all the Final Fantasies that I hadn't beaten yeah. yet. So I started out by beating seven. I beat seven, uh, like my first week of the pandemic, like second 
second night in quarantine, I stayed up the whole night and beat seven. Like I just did the final stretch of the Fair game. Fair enough. Uh, that was really fun. I had actually never beaten Final Fantasy VII before, so that was a good experience. I, you know, I knew how it ended. Of course, it's Final Fantasy VII. Everybody knows yeah. how it fucking ends. But exactly. um, it was a, it was, it was just, a, it was, it felt a, like a completionist experience yeah, for me to for be sure. able to do that. I mean, I even, so I immediately uh, moved on to to finishing eight. I actually, afterwards. forgot to mention, I, I I've made it about. I think I'm at the tail end of a uh, seven original not not remake uh yeah yeah, I, yeah. Wanna, I, I have not played that. remake <laughs> i am very excited I'm... to play remake honestly so am i i have not played it yet but i i i perhaps mighty end up purchasing a console just for that yeah i would <laughs> it looks I, really I, good i think i would uh, yeah whatever i don't know i i think i'm just gonna get the game and go over to my friend's house who has a ps4 and be like hey guess what we're doing tonight <laughs> and you have no yeah, choice you can either leave the place you live or watch me play this Relinqu- anime ass relinquish game. your playstation yeah. so that i may play my anime yeah. game uh, but uh yeah so I, be- I beat seven i i was in the final stretch already like i was i was at the giant chasm so i just kind of got through that and beat the game then i've played through eight i'm not finished eight yet but i'm in the final stretch of the game i'm on the fourth disc so that's nearly done. Eight has uh, very, very steadily climbed its way up the ladder of quality Final Fantasies in my mind. I have so much to, so much about that game that I never appreciated until now. Spending like an amount of time with it that I think warms you to the game. Yeah. But the the characters, um, the battle system. Once you get really, once it's like the least user friendly worst ui of any final fantasy system ever the junction system but once you know how everything works and once you get into it it it's the best it's so it's so fun and in-depth and customizable uh there's a bit of a risk reward vibe to it because you can choose whether or not you want your character to be able to use items in battle Uh, which is no which is very which is very interesting so sometimes, you know, you want a character to have the capability of using items because you're fighting an enemy who's not necessarily who's weak to fire, but you don't have any fire spells. Or some yeah, shit exactly. Like that. Although junctioning magic is super easy oh, is in it? the new okay, version of the game enough. because you can speed up and uh, you can speed up and also turn off random encounters. Oh, so you can brave. Uh, uh... You can you can break. Although once again, that's just like a thing you can do in the newest edition yeah. again. The the very nice remaster that they yeah. did. But what I really like about eight is that like without those things, you can still get nitty gritty into the systems and break the game, which is really fun to be like this ultra powered badass. But like I'm, I have I think I only used the stuff for level grinding once or twice, like the special things, yeah. like the. But I'm already with Squall and half of my party. Like I've just spent so much time leveling up that we're already at like level ninety nine. Shit. So we're I have a super powerful party and we're going to go fuck Ultimisia. Fuck that bitch. But um, yeah, so I'm in the final stretch of eight. But then I kind of started my quarantine out by also rewatching a bunch of Ghibli stuff and writing about it on Letterboxd. Yeah. Like I started a I started a Letterboxd account yeah, and I started I writing your, about your the films that I watch. A lot. So I started doing that, and I started watching a lot of Ghibli because I got all this Ghibli. And now and there's no better Netflix. time to watch Ghibli because Canadian Netflix I, has it I all. I didn't but see that prior news. to that happening. I I had it. I didn't all. see that news, so. and I booted up Netflix uh, with uh, with a friend, and fucking, I was like, oh shit, they added Princess no- Mononoke. Oh fuck, it's Spirit. Of- Holy shit, they're all here. What the fuck? When did this happen? They're all there. Because uh, I, so I, I, I watched a bunch of I, uh, I, I I dipped from Twitter for a bit, so I, I missed that. Yeah. But I, I I watched a bunch of Miyazaki stuff, and I watched some Takahata as well. But um, it got me into a very Ghibli mood. Yeah. And as I was trolling through the uh, the Switch shop, I stumbled upon Nino Kuni, which was on sale for uh, actually. A pretty good Fancy price that. so i said to myself well all right and i bought nino kuni and i started playing it i had never played it before all i knew about it was that ghibli though not miyazaki or takahata just ghibli yeah. artists helped work on some of the game they did some animated cutscenes no. and character designs and stuff like that do you mean nino uh, only the first one, one though two? not not 
not two. Okay, just one. They only they only helped with one. Okay. But yeah, Nino Kuni, it's developed by Level 5, who do like the Yokai Watch games yeah. and a bunch of other really cool kind of RPGs. Um, Professor Layton, that's them. But um, yeah, it's an RPG that just basically takes all of the fun like children's fantasy conventions you like from Ghibli movies, like a mix of Asiatic fantasy with classic British children's literature and all of these kind of different things and mishmashes them into a really fun... Uh, rpg with kind of like a monster hunting taming mechanic yeah it's it's a really fun game uh the story is all right it's kind of just like it's it's very predictable but the thing that i like the most about the game really is the battle system and like the just the world exploring the world it's so big and there's so much to do and so many secrets to find so it's a really it's just a fun game to kind of pour your self into for a little bit and just enjoy feeling like you're in a Ghibli movie. Like it's just a nice kind of power fantasy. So I I really enjoy Nino Kuni, but it's pretty much only on that basis. It's it's not the most impressive game. It is very emotionally resonant. Like the first five minutes of the game made me cry because it was Ghibli. Yeah. Shit. But, um, like, you know, it's just, that's what you want, right? You want Ghibli to make you cry. You want Ghibli to make you feel wonder and like a kid. And it does. It makes me feel like all those things. So I'm, I really enjoy Nino Kuni for that. Uh, like I said, on the other hand, it's it's not the best game. It's a little clunky. It's very PS3 era JRPG. Um, and it's a PS3 era JRPG adapted from, a like, a 3DS RPG. So it's very, like, I don't know. It, it it's not like um, Xenoblade Chronicles being ported to the 3DS. This is like a 3DS game being ported to a console. Yeah. So it feels a little bit like a handheld game at points. Like the some things about the key, like the the um, some of the character designs, a little bit of the writing. It's very truncated. Yeah. But um, they added a lot for the for the console version. Like it is a it is a different game in some regards, but there's parts of it that still feel very much like a classic kind of handheld RPG, which I can appreciate as a fan of handheld console RPGs. Like as somebody who grew up almost playing exclusively handheld RPGs, but um, it, you sometimes expect a bit more from it. But for the most part, it's a really fun, enjoyable game. So if you see it on sale again, I recommend you pick it up. But another game that I poured myself into, Dragon Quest XI. Yes. I reached an impasse at a certain point in my previous kind of session playing through the yeah, game RPG where wall. I got it. I beat the main game. Like I beat like the I beat what seemed to be like the main story. And then I arrived at a point in the narrative that for a long time is a point of no return i have to say yeah where they ask you to make a pretty big decision and i guess spoilers for dragon quest 11 so maybe skip ahead a couple of minutes if you don't want to hear this mm -hmm. but at the at the turning point of the main game one of the main characters is killed permanently they are dead they're gone from the party and you go through the rest of the game kind of fixing the world that got all fucked up and mourning that person's death and kind of moving beyond it and all the characters grow because yeah. of it you beat the final boss and then after you beat the final boss you loop around back oh, no. and you get to this place called like the tower of lost time and you go in and it's revealed that you can actually go back with all the, the knowledge that you have now to the point in which that character died and easily saved them because you go, you're going back at full power yeah. as like, you know, at that point in the game, you're like level 60 yeah, yeah. and everybody at that point of the game was like level 30. And then you just so you're going back house. like 50% stronger than you were at that point. You can, and you basically are given the opportunity to smoke the main character, smoke the big bad before he can fuck the world yeah. up and save the, one of those main characters from dying. And, I felt very conflicted about that because yeah, I, don't, I was like, I don't like that. I I don't know how I feel, but I ended up going through with it. I bit the bullet, and um, what followed was I think one of the most rewarding, like, f like I guess final stretches of an RPG I've ever experienced. Huh? Do, because do, do suddenly, not go according as planned. 
The war. Well, the thing is, they do. Okay. But something else turns around and happens that changes the context of a lot of the events in the story. A lot of stuff that went kind of unexplained previously gets explained to you, and the whole. I guess like the whole secret of this world and how and what has happened to it and in it is revealed to you okay. in this final stretch. And suddenly, it feels very rewarding, and you're like, oh, okay. So anyway, All right. I had a really good time powering my way through it. I had already thought the world had opened up to the peak that it could have opened up to me, and I was wrong. There was more to see, more to do, more to explore, more stories to experience, um, and a lot of fun stuff, because basically when you go back now, after you go back, you smoke the big bad before you can fuck shit up, and then all of the stuff that you did in the future that now never happened is still happening, but it's happening in different contexts now. So you go back around and you're going back to all these places and you're seeing all these stories that wrapped up in the future have not wrapped up now, but they're ending differently. Different things are happening. Character moments are changing. And it's playing with your expectations as to what's going to what is happening in this world because oh, you thought that that character was supposed to tragically pass away without ever seeing their final love. Well, now they actually do get to see their love. Like stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. That's fucking So nice. it's it's very nice. Right. It was a good experience. I'm gonna have to Dragon Quest Eleven. Dragon Quest Eleven is amazing. Because uh, my friend, my friend also uh, Anthony, he uh, he also played it recently. I think he bounced off a bit because uh, Resident Evil Three remake came out, and then some other mm-hmm. shit, and like it just kind of you know shit happens. Video games. Yeah, you you fall into the game pit yeah. again. But uh, he he was uh, he was also saying it was it was very good. Um, it's it's it is in my opinion but you have the you best have dragon the best, the best version of it because the switch version i do is like, the switch yeah, version is incredible the, uh, that's definitive that is the that is the the version of the game to buy do not buy dragon quest 11 on any other console you buy the switch version and i'll tell you exactly why i'm pretty sure i explained this in a previous podcast but in addition to additional story material free dlc and a bunch of other stuff like that the soundtrack, which is entirely MIDI synths in the other console versions, is an orchestral score in the Switch version. And I don't say that because I think the soundtrack is great. In fact, I think I, I've i already shared my opinions on Koichi Sugiyama uh, in, like, I guess, TLDR, retire bitch. Mm-hmm. But um, at the same time, it's not fucking annoying. <laughs> The soundtrack is legitimately obnoxious in the other versions because of the MIDI synths. They're so shrill, and they sound like fucking dog shit. So the orchestral score, it's pretty, it sounds nice, it's not an amazing score, it's not mind-blowing. Sugiyama was a good composer, he is now a fucking 80-something-year-old man and is bad and can no longer do anything but remix his old scores, so he's not a good composer anymore, they need a new composer. But um, I'm pretty sure that they've ousted him, though, at this point, because um, the uh, not just his bad politics, but also because like the output has been bad, yeah. like his music has not as been as good. And I know I saw that for like the next couple of Dragon Quest games, even the spinoffs, they're all not. You know, they're remixing Sugiyama's music, but Sugiyama is not doing the soundtracks himself anymore. And I'm pretty sure he hasn't really even been doing that for a while, too, because mm-hmm. he's so fucking old. But anyway, Sugiyama, retire, bitch. You're fucking old. Go die. Go sleep. Uh, you suck. But um, yeah, play the Switch version. That's the version with the best soundtrack. I, I'm excited for for the uh, the the post of uh, he's dead now. He has died away in his sleep from a heart attack overnight, and uh, it will be directly your fault, Ryan. Oh, good. You killed. You I hope killed so. Sugiyama. I hope I killed Koichi Sugiyama. <laughs> <laughs> it would be poetic justice for a queer person to have killed him. Fair enough. But um, <laughs> so I was gonna say, yeah, that is like the peak of Dragon Quest for me. I think of all the Dragon Quest games I've played and enjoyed, which are a lot of them. Um, I used to think eight was my favorite, and for a long time it was. Uh, I'm also 
very fond of four and five. I think those are great games. I'm fond of three just as well, as well as some of the spinoffs, like the Dragon Quest Monsters games for the Game Which Boy. Which was the one you told me to jump in on again? Four, I think? Or three? Um, I'm pretty sure it was eight. Oh, yeah, it might have been eight. Yeah, eight's, eight's the 3DS. The 3DS port of eight is very uh, good. I got to get a new 3DS. Mine snapped in half. Um, no! Yeah. That's like my nightmare. It's, it... Wow, I just peaked the audio. Oh real no, bad that's there. okay. Um, I I peaked the audio when it happened. Uh, yeah, I I went to the, I went on a, like I think we went to someone's house or something, and I packed it and like had the bottom like it was in the bottom of my bag. I played it for a bit, and repacking my shit, I just put shit on top of it, and I guess it somehow opened up in transport, and just the weight just snapped it. So I took everything out, and oh, then it was in half, God. and I was like. No, that's like a that is like a nightmare to me. It, that's it like bad. you're you're describing a nightmare. It was scenario. horrible. I cried. No, I, I, that I would I would I would I would cry. I, did I, I would cry, cry for remember. a very long time. I don't time. remember if I cried. I remember being. I'm. I'm still <laughs> At least all the memory is, is still... salvageable and on a yeah. card, but still, yeah, that would piss me off. I need to buy a, a, a new 3ds XL just because I, I, I have one, but I want the nice 2ds XL one, the big, big one. Yeah, because it's it has a good screen. <laughs> It has like a switch screen, mm-hmm. basically. It's a really nice piece of tech. It's like a hundred something dollars. I think I might just invest in that. But anyway, yeah, Dragon Quest Eleven is like the peak of JRPGs for me. Like it's everything that I want. It's the perennial JRPG. There's time travel, everything but it's that... not bad apparently. No, it's great. Yeah. It's really good, and um, the battle system is tight. It's customizable. You can do two kinds. There's two, basically two layers of battle that you can go through. You can do the traditional battle system, turn based, kind of all characters in a row, mm-hmm. like I do, or you can like manually place your characters around the enemies and do like these kind of little dioramas as you fight them and take pictures. So there's that's the one for people who are very into photographing their games and it's a very photogenic game so i could understand why they'd want to it's a beautiful looking game but anyway dq11 very good uh get dq11 s for the switch it's very good it's the best version of the game and it's the the best dragon quest game mm-hmm. coming from somebody who has played a lot of them that's the best one. Oh, and i'm i'm not the only person who says that a lot of other people agree it is the peak dragon quest game it's just everything about it still being made by yuji hori nice Ever since, ever since the first Dragon Quest, is, uh, the, literally, still doing and Dragon art? Quest is, yeah, Toriyama's still the artist. Yeah. It's it's not even like Toriyama's ghost artist that he has on all like yeah, the Dragon, the Dragon Ball Dragon stuff Ball now that yeah. he just writes. It's really it is Toriyama doing designs because him and Yuji Hori are friends. Because I mean, not only have they worked together for so long, but Yuji Hori used to work for Shonen Jump. Oh, so before he started developing it, and Yuji Hori, I don't know if you know this, a little bit of game history. Um, not only is Dragon Quest technically the first JRPG, uh, and like the basically the the thing that invented uh, yeah, the JRPG the, like, is the formula. first Dragon Quest. Yeah, it's he is that is the the original JRPG. He's also the creator of the the Japanese visual novel. Really? Yeah, because um, he created the Portopia serial murders case, okay, yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. the first visual novel. So Portop, literally Yuji Hori, who is still working in games, he's not that old. He's like in his early sixties. Yeah, yeah. Is the the basically the, the father of two yeah. of the the two of the most important Japanese game Amazing. genres. And so yeah, and Yuji Hori is still the still like the lead director on most Dragon Quest shit. I don't remember so. why I just remembered this, but uh, back to Power, Power Rangers Battle for the Grid for just a sec. Uh, it sure. has the most cross-platform shit that I think is available right now. Like, yes, you will be able to play true. matches when yeah. you get it on your Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I think that's a really I... good note. Uh, also, second note, I picked up the KFC visual novel uh, thing. Oh, the Colonel. Yeah, the I love Kuhn. you, Colonel Kuhn thing. So I'm probably yeah. gonna do a stream of that to see. Uh, oh to boy, see what the fuck's going on there? I wish I could love Colonel Sanders, but unfortunately, I'm allergic to his chicken. Oh really? That's uh, I love his chicken. Yeah. I haven't had his it in many and, years. In, in his fried yeah, chicken, there's, there's a lot of stuff in his fried chicken. Wax. Seventeen <laughs> herbs and spices. Why can't you be like a real? Real fried chicken and use buttermilk and no eggs, you bitch. Because <laughs> then it wouldn't be the Colonel way. Well, fuck you, Colonel, Is Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders I don't a Confederate icon. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. He, I don't know. Uh, I don't know about that. I don't know anything. I about got Colonel the game Sanders for free. So I don't care. 
<laughs> you didn't give them no. any money. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, if Dragon Quest XI is like the peak of JRPGs in terms of like the perennial standard for them, uh, the next game that I've been playing that I want to talk about, the last game I want to talk about, Xenoblade Chronicles. Ah, uh, yes. Um, is it the, is uh, the, the... the peak of the new generation of JRPGs? Yeah, is it the remake? The, uh... I, ju- I picked up Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive yes. Edition for Switch after I've played it and beaten it on um, the DS. 3DS. Yeah. yeah, I had the 3DS version. I, I literally bought a new 3DS actually just to play that game. Uh, so I played it on there and I beat it. But I didn't love it on the, the, the DS. And I think it's just because the DS is not the right console for a Xenoblade game. Mm-hmm. It's a very, very good port of the Wii game. Like, it's, it's a very uncompromised port for the most part. They use a lot of very clever technical trickery to make that game work on that console. But it is still, because of the, the nature of the 3DS's controls and stuff like that, uh, it's a system-heavy game with, like, a lot of UI on the screen. So on a little screen, it's kind of like... But I beat it. I played it and beat it. But it didn't wow me. Playing it on the Switch... It has wowed me. And I, I have Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I've, I'm like 30% of the way through it, but I stopped playing. I got it around the time I got my Switch. But Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition has endeared me entirely to Xenoblade. Like, it is... I, I have nothing bad to say about Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. It is one of the best JRPGs I have ever played. It's got a wonderful, wonderful story. <laughs> it's got a, a, such a good story. Really, really engaging. A great world. Very fun battle. So it's, it's a game that made me like MMO-style combat systems. Mm-hmm. I fucking hate MMO combat systems. I hate warm-up and cool-down bullshit. I hate it. Yeah. I fucking hate it so much. And guess the fuck what? It's this good. game made me love it. This game made me love it. I'm addicted to it now. I bought this game three weeks ago, like when it came out, precisely three weeks ago, and I am nearly done. I am in the final chapter of the game. I have been playing it almost every day since i got it exploring the beautiful world discovering more stuff about the story just falling in love with it i have xenoblade chronicles is for my money the best jrpg on the switch and the switch is a console with a lot of good jrpgs including old ports including ports of recent games including games like dragon quest 11 which i just finished saying is one of the best jrpgs i have ever played and the best game in its series xenoblade chronicles definitive edition is the best jrpg available on the switch it is an incredible game the amount of love that monolith soft put into retouching this game up and making it just as perfect as possible is nothing short of astounding. It is such a visual upgrade from the Wii game in every sense, and not just because it's in HD. Not just because of that, but the textures, the character like renders and stuff like that, the models, they're so beautiful. And sure, they clip and stuff like that, because it is still a remaster of the original game. But, holy shit, that Wii game stacked up next to the Switch game... I mean, wow, yes, the console from 2006 looks worse than the console from 2016. Big whoop, okay? But really, setting Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition next to Xenoblade Chronicles on the Wii Mm -hmm. is... It's... It's it's kind of crazy how much better it looks. Even just the trailer, the the, the announcement trailer was like... You saw it, and you were like, this is a Xenogears game, but which one? And then it was like, the first one. And you're like, what? The first I lo- one? <laughs> so the Xenoblade games have... are, are It's such a strange series, right? Oh, yeah. Xenoblade. Um, I said Xenogears, didn't I? Yeah. yeah, well, well, I mean, but, yeah. Same, same team. Same yeah, team. So I, I just get go. them mixed up so often. But yeah, that's what I meant was the, uh, the Xenoblade yeah. uh, announcement trailer that came out about a year there, ago, right? Something yeah. Like I I am honestly astounded that this series is like a Nintendo mainstay. Not because I think Nintendo has a thing against JRPGs. I think Nintendo is actually very welcoming to JRPGs, especially recently. Unless their mother. 
And I and I don't think that JRPGs don't fit into Nintendo's established aesthetic. I think that Nintendo is a company that has had a very long and actually pretty fruitful history with the genre and only like a one period in its history where it wasn't a huge part of that console library lineup and that was like the uh, Nintendo 64 GameCube era where JRPGs are very not present on those consoles. But like the Wii from the Wii era onward, Nintendo has and of on always on all other handhelds regardless of era nintendo has always welcomed the jrpg but xenoblade specifically as a series feels so i mean xenogear is obviously like a classic sony you know very very sony very square ps1 era square series right Mm -hmm. it feels so ps1 era square and maybe even early ps2 era jrpgs like some of my favorite games this is what this feels like. It does not feel like a Wii game. It does not feel like a, a Wii U game. It does not feel like a Switch game. It feels like a Sony big budget PS1 to PS2 era RPG. And it is so good. This this game has so much love put into it. Genuine love. And like I said, the story is wonderful. The gameplay is so addictive and fun. Uh, The world is incredible. I mean, if you don't know anything about the world of Xenoblade, for those who are not aware, it is set on two gigantic titans dead in the middle of an ocean whose whose sword is like embedded into the other one, connected by that. And one of the titans is infested with mechanical life and the other one organic life. And the mechanical life is invading the organic titan and destroying and taking out... um, the colonies of of like sentient organic beings on the other one it's it's such like a crazy high concept it very fits in with my love of stuff like bionicle and like dualistic themes and stuff like that because i love dualism in literature Mm -hmm. and i love i love dualism in like you know do themes of dualism in my media like it's just something i enjoy i love the idea of good and evil fighting i don't know maybe it's the the catholic upbringing but um the notion of good and evil locked or or not good and evil necessarily but two forces that seem to be in opposition with one another locked in eternal combat is something that i find so enticing and like instantly enjoyable and and like a very good vehicle for interesting storytelling and xenoblade is no different it's it's exactly that it is using this really classic framework and classic jrpg kind of theming to tell a really really cool interesting story with a really really great cast of characters a great world and a great battle system um and there's so many collectibles and little customizable bits in it too i mean all of the the, all of the armor in the game is cosmetic yes that's that good shit so so you can completely Style customize souls. your character's d- looks. Like, my characters look like fucking Bionicles. <laughs> because they're all multicolored and super weird techno armor. So, my characters in the game look like Bionicles. And I'm fucking into it. But you can make them super... You can, there's organic armor. There's cloth armor. There's, like, you know, armor themed to different areas in the game that suits, like, the populations of those environments. Mm-hmm. Um, multiple color sets for each different kind of armor, too. And you can mix and match bits and pieces, so you can and you can set cosmetic armor all the while not actually wearing that armor piece. Yes. So once you get a, once you get a piece of Hunter armor, regardless of regardless of if you have it in your inventory or not, or if it's equipped to a character, you will always keep the ability to use it cosmetically. How how good is that? How cool is that? It's fucking sick. It's a thing that a lot it's of games so need. Sick. Um. It's so fucking cool. It's, it's a thing that a lot of games need, for sure. Because sometimes you want your character to look away, but then you get this fucking ugly yeah. ass thing that does like a million defense, and you're like, okay, yeah. Well, like Dragon Quest Eleven, all the weapons are cosmetic. Yeah, but the armor and all sets, like, like and and the armor sets. There's five or six that are cosmetic. Oh, okay. You know, each character has like five or six cosmetic settings. <sighs> They're all very nice. They're very nice, and they they play out in, in like the in all of the non pre rendered cutscenes, mm-hmm. like the ones that the game renders in engine. Your characters are still in the armor. Xenoblade goes above and beyond in that 
all of the games seem to be rendered in engine all of the cutscenes so every cutscene where your characters are there they're still wearing their cool armor amazing it's very that, sick yeah, i love it it's that that's just like a little just like a little taste yeah, of of how mm, i mean that's mm, like one of those mm. like weird I guess it's not really a quality of life, but attention to detail things where you're like, oh, yeah, mm. Mm, fucking do it. Thank you for not. They didn't have to do that. Yeah, but they yeah, did. exactly. Thank you for not. So Xenoblade budget. is great. <laughs> and on top of that, the score from the original game, which is very good, has been reorchestrated for Amazing. this. So if you want to hear oh, one shoot. of the best RPG scores of like the last decade, mm-hmm. I I refer you to the Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition soundtrack, which has a vinyl, actually, that you can get if you're in the UK. So if you're listening in the UK and you like Xenoblade, you can get a vinyl of that soundtrack if you do like a special pre-order yeah. of the game or something like that, which is fucking uh, sick. I, ha- I might have to go and look for that on eBay. I'll be right back. I have to uh, go sure get thing. my clothes out of the dryer, I think. All right, <laughs> just to liberate then, uh, some I'll space. Hold, I'll hold down the fort, and I'll. Uh, you know what? Before we get into the news, I'll I'll talk about some of the stuff that I've been working Excellent. on. Excellent, do that. I will be. Uh, it yeah. shouldn't be too long, like two minutes. Sure thing. Uh, so while Ben does that, um, I've been brainstorming a lot of different things for the future of Game Punks because I I have a lot of time on my hands during my quarantine before I started working to brainstorm ideas and. Something that we're always talking about on this podcast, and I've, I've advertised this on our social media feeds and stuff, is um, like my love of handheld games, particularly the DS era. It's the era of games that I grew up in. The DS was my primary console for about a decade, and uh, actually over a decade, quite frankly. It was, it was my primary console for almost 12 to 13 years it was the thing that i played most games on it's the, still the console family that i have the most games for collectively um but i love those games i have a lot of great games for them that nobody ever fucking talks about so i started a po- i'm starting an idea for a podcast we're gonna start recording these soon it's called um touch generation and it is my ds era games podcast it's about Games from the DS family of consoles, from the early DS up to the 3DS. Um, But um, we won't be going through them in any kind of way. And it's maybe pardon me for ripping off of Retronauts a little bit, but I want to kind of do a partly roundtable discussion, partly scripted history lesson on each of these games. So the format for the episodes will be partly scripted, partly unscripted roundtable discussion with guests of a variety of different games for the 3ds and ds and uh yeah i'm very excited to launch that so we'll be recording the first episode soon and when that's out of course it'll be on all of our social media it'll be on youtube it'll be uh available to download from our mega folder but um yeah very excited to talk about that i love the ds and i can't wait to share my love of the ds family of consoles and it's really the just a fantastic library of games underrated games available for Hello. it um that's coming up i just explained to the audience um my idea for our upcoming new show oh yes the uh, the ds show, touch right? generations yes. yep i just explained to them the premise of i'm that. gonna go but, off about uh, the mario basketball game by the way just so you know that's gonna be yes good because that game is really fucking Dude, awesome my my elementary school in tennessee that game was uh the equivalent of uh fortnite now everyone had it and there were like legit competitions at lunch uh but i'll save that for uh i'll save that for an episode yeah we have we have to do that for sure actually there's there's a couple of uh really interesting sports games for the the ds family of consoles like we could do a a whole episode on mario sports games but um yeah uh yeah i just explained to them that but anyway uh i guess we can move in and talk about a few headlines before ending some pretty cool stuff happened during the pandemic. There's a lot of game news because companies were pushing out a lot of kind of stuff to keep people slated, I guess. And because no conventions are happening this year, um, they had to keep the news going. Yeah, we're doing little so, mini E3s every single day. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, but some of the highlights, at least for me, have been the announcement of a new character for Smash, Min Min from ARMS. Yes, which I was disappointed uh, that it wasn't Twin Tail. Uh, but 
I I was disappointed it, disappointed it wasn't Twin Tail. Min was my until, second choice until I realized that um, having Min Min in the game means they could, I guess, like potentially put an Echo Fighter in for other Arms characters mm. because I... Twin Tail's design is fundamentally different from some of the yeah, other ones. Yeah, that would go over. Uh, that would go over pretty bad if it was the DLC character, though. I think. It would. I think uh, so, like, too. I mean, they, I feel like as an Echo Fighter, though, it would just come with the other fighter. Yeah, like, if if it happens. I, I don't yeah, see that it, That Once I again, think ultimate, if, if it I happens. I think Ultimate's going to be uh, the Smash for a good bit, uh, kind of like uh, Melee was. Uh, anybody or, who's uh, still... Brawl, uh, I, I love Melee, but anybody who's still stuck on Melee as the best party fighter of all time... Well, they have netcode now. I, they have online netcode. That's all I'll give them. It's literally all I'll give them. One one person sat down and made the net code good uh, through emulation. I mean, good for them, yeah. I guess. Yeah. But I don't know. I just I love Nintendo and I like uh, video games, so I don't want to uh, exclusively play an old game that yeah. was fun like those, when I was eating pizza at a birthday party. It's like party, those arcade uh, heads that still are like ago. Super Turbo is the only Street Fighter, and you're like, shut up. Please shut Third the fuck strike up. Is That's great. how I feel Third too. Third Strike is amazing. And there's like all I have to tell these people at the same time is like also the way that you guys play melee. I swear to God, if you played like a real fighting game, you'd cry. Yeah. So, well, I mean that, that was the thing so when Cherry Bogart up. came out too. Everyone's like, yeah. these fucking inputs. And it's like that's quarter circle forward. That's that's baby. That's that's the, that's that's, the first that's, thing you that's should baby know. baby mode Fatal Fury, my yeah. guy. Like really, really baby mode Fatal Fury, baby mode. There ain't no pretzel motions in there. Oh, fucking ridiculous but um anyway so min min is in smash i think she's cute so i am happy the announcement trailer was adorable captain falcon really likes ron uh falcon lunch no oh, he was so fucking Love cute it. that was Kirby. that was a wonderful little Kirby's trailer and cute, but i mean he just he just took a big eat yo did you see that uh funko pop kirby he had the whole bowl oh uh! yeah what's the like, most cursed kirby image on the up? internet that one or the kirby with the feet oh yeah have you not seen the the other kirby What's the There's other one? The... There's a third oh, cursed Kirby. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. I'll see if I can find it and I'll send it to you in Discord. It can't possibly be worse you... than Feet Kirby. It's way worse. No. Okay. <laughs> I I eagerly question mark no. wait this. <laughs> no. No, I don't. <laughs> With bated breath, I await this cursed image. Um But uh yeah, I I thought that an SM trailer was cute. I watched the whole breakdown video with Sakurai explaining how Min Min plays. Yeah. Looks like a fun character. Honestly, really, really fun. I, I, she looks just, what I like about all these DLC characters is regardless of whether or not it's a character, I, although I'll be cards on the table, all the characters I want to in the game are in there. So I have no, I have no other asks of them. Yeah. Like I will not ask Sakurai to do more for me. He's no, already done. He's... He put Dragon, he put Dragon Quest in Smash. I'm not going to do anything he's now. He's dying. But, uh, <laughs> poor man but um like i i appreciate that every dlc character has played radically differently from almost every other character in the game so far there's such different ways of playing these characters they're completely different and strange and interesting yeah. and min min is no exception to that i think she looks wonderful and like a very cool addition to the roster um there is a kingdom hearts fucking rhythm game i'm coming so out. excited for it but it also and looks horrible. i lost my goddamn mind when i heard it was coming out on switch it's canon i can't wait canon. the fucking madman made the rhythm game canon well thank you for the food no I'm more i'm not huh? expecting any less at this point honestly i would i would have been upset if it wasn't canon probably would have been a little bit upset too honestly though if it had just been like a musical romp through every game in the series up to and including three I would have been okay with that, but the fact that it is like an additional narrative, yeah, it's I'm nice. Like, it's really nice. Fuck, give me, give me that recoded, give me that, give me that recoded distance. garbage. Yeah. Give me that, give me that dream drop distance. Give me that three, five, eight days. That's what I'm looking for. That's what you I want. You know what? But I'm. Oh uh, yeah. I want to talk about the uh, fucking just like real quick. I'm super stoked that the Project Zone mobile game is going to be a goddamn card game. Yeah. Like, fucking yep. uh, i was so happy because i was that's like really actually that's really wonderful yeah, it's i'm fucking hype um that yeah that was pretty much it but uh yeah melody of memory it is a kingdom hearts rhythm game and i feel like 
Firstly, how is that not... I know that like there's some Kingdom Hearts stuff in Theatrhythm Final Fantasy, but I have to say, how the fuck has there not been a Kingdom Hearts rhythm game? There's literally rhythm games in the Kingdom Hearts yeah, games. Yeah, I think that's How has why. there not been a Kingdom Hearts game that's just a rhythm game? I th- but um, I feel like the music is one of the biggest things that most people agree upon with Kingdom Hearts, because as contentious a series as it is, I've never heard anybody say a negative word about Yoko Shimomura's music. Yeah. Like, it's it's the most universally loved aspect of those games. So, yeah, how did this not happen? I'm happy it's happening, but, like, it's kind of the same thing, though, with Theatre Rhythm. Like, it took them that long to make a Final Fantasy rhythm game. Really? Like, yeah. that should have happened way long ago. But it's happening. Great. I cannot wait to play it. I'm buying that day one. For sure. Because I love rhythm games. I love fucking Kingdom Hearts. I love Kingdom Hearts music. I love Disney music. So I'm doing that. And um, I wrote in the notes Pokemon Unite. And Do you know anything about this? Did you hear anything about I it? I saw it was like a MOBA thing. I just kind of I checked out pretty much immediately. It's I. I think it's the I, only I want to like the only Pokemon game that won't be divisive. No, yeah, everybody's <laughs> gonna universally hate it. Um, I have the the funny thing about that, I guess, is for anybody who wasn't paying attention to this, a week before they dropped the news about Pokemon Unite, they had like a little Pokemon Direct that included a bunch of information on a bunch of weird, cool new Pokemon stuff coming out, including a new Pokemon, which Snap was game, the big pop off. Which... Which is the huge fucking Nintendo thing. Nintendo was like, some... the world is in shambles right now. We need to give them hope. Exactly. And a Pokemon game that came out called, like, Pokemon Cafe, which is like a Pokemon Troze-esque yeah. puzzle game. Uh, it's like a ma- I'm pretty sure it's like a match three. Yeah, um, it, I've, not pl- like I've not that. played it. I'm not interested. But it is free. So if you want to, you could get it on the Switch store. But, um, yeah, like, they released this big thing, and, and you know, that came out right after, you know, the week after Ar- the Isle of Armor DLC came out, which I've been playing, actually, I should say, and it's it's good. I like it. Um, it's it's just fun to have more to explore in Sword and Shield, because yeah, God knows that game needs more, more shit. Game. Yeah, more. I'm not going to say no to more, and I'm excited for the Crown Tundra, which is apparently going to be fucking huge. But um, if you've seen any of the uh, leaks... I have not, <laughs> but... Some people went into the game's code because yeah. the the DLC includes all the code for Crown Tundra, or like unfinished code for it. Yeah, and they scoped out the size of the area, and it is big. Mm. It is big, and it is a wild area style area, oh, so nice. it is massive and freely explorable, just like the Isle of Armor, which is also freely explorable three D environment. Um. Anyway, yeah. So uh, a week after annou- like announcing all this shit, they had like a little stinger at the end of that trailer that was like come back next week for a huge announcement and everybody was like oh we're gonna learn about crown tundra oh they're gonna announce the remakes for diamond and pearl oh they're gonna do this oh they're gonna do that and i was just or they're gonna announce like pokemon pokemon let's go Two, you know like something like that and i was just sitting there like they ain't gonna do that i know they're not gonna do that and of course come the day you know 8 a.m everybody's waking up to watch pokemon direct and they're just like Everybody, we love to introduce you to the new Pokemon! And immediately, it's just like, here's a MOBA. Guess who's developing it? It's Tencent. Yes, everybody's favorite company. Enjoy! It's like, yes, the multimedia Chinese conglomerate that owns Riot Games. Great! And Platinum. Well, they don't own Platinum. Uh, I don't remember if they own or not. I don't think they own Platinum. They got a partnership thing going. They have a partnership with them, I think. Um, But I don't think they own them. At any rate... That was Tencent. like, wow, that was bad. <laughs> anyway, it's a Pokemon MOBA. It's going to be on Switch and mobile, so I don't know who uh, it's for. Yeah, I don't know who that's for. At the, I, oof. I didn't know it was only on Switch At, like, or mobile. Absolutely no clue who that is yeah. for, but Switch and mobile. That I didn't even think it. of that. There's no way that's coming to PC. Oof. I mean, cross-play with Switch and mobile is possible, but... Yeah, but I don't understand. I don't understand why you'd wanna. Yeah, why would? I also don't understand why people like MOBAs to begin with. But mm. the whole, whole of the world is apparently enamored with that style of game. So I'm not gonna tell them not to make one. But uh, I feel like I'm. Sometimes I feel like I'm the only person in the world who does not give a shit about MOBAs. <laughs> 
Like, every time I talk to somebody who plays video games, they always ask me if I play League of Legends, and I'm like, I do not. I don't play League of Legends. I, am, do you play League I do of not Legends, play Dota. Do you play I do Fortnite? not play Smite. No. I do not play League of Legends. I don't play Fortnite. Although, Fortnite, I actually do understand the appeal. I enjoy it. Because it's, you it's know, fun. Battle Royale style game. I've never played it. Um, actually, speaking of Fortnite, that's a cute segue to, hey, in wake of the George Floyd protests, a lot of companies are you know, engaging in what I would like to call extremely late period performative activism. But uh, like this is late stage capitalism crumbling in on itself. Yeah. But it, we, we gotta... through the performative activism, you do get racists being very mad. So that's funny. And one of the things that made racists very mad was uh, Fortnite removing cop cars from all versions of the game. No more cop cars. Um, so, you know, they're still going to steal dances from black people. Of course, but we'll, but they're, they're, they're not going to, they're not going to, they're not going to favorably depict systemically violent stuff. They'll which, just to covertly which I say, do it. They'll just do it covertly instead. So big hypocritical hat tip off to them. Um, but I, I do have to say seeing racists get mad that they can't play their game, uh, without, feeling like it has politics in it makes me very happy yes so on one hand performative activism is whack companies to stop supporting cops um but anyway uh and another segue from companies stop supporting cops would be the miles morales spider-man game that's coming out that they announced for ps5 ps5 was announced uh i don't care <laughs> i i've never owned a playstation console <laughs> and all of the games they announced for it did not pique my interest i was like oh this looks good resi 8 okay yeah i'll play that but everything else i'm like i don't care <laughs> you know when you just like see something and you're like yeah horizon zero dawn a game yep. that i don't like horizon one dawn. sequel horizon one dawn horizon horizon boring dawn i uh, that game is beautiful and seems like it could have had a lot of potential with like robot dinosaurs and shit i thought that was pretty cool uh but when it came out and i heard nothing more of it i was kind of like okay yeah it's a video game it exists it's honestly horizon zero dawn is breath of the wild for people who don't own a nintendo console (laughs) that's that's who that game is that game is for people who don't own a switch but want to feel like they're playing breath of the wild that's who it's for and nothing else am i wrong no that's so right it's just i didn't hear it put in that context before but i've never heard anyone be more right and now we're going to have a bunch of Sony heads just fucking... Just, <laughs> mm. That's who it's yeah. for. I'm sorry. It's. I'm sure like it has an emotionally resonant story, but I was way more interested in that game when it had like fucking art design, you know, when they first announced it and they showed concept sketches and I'm like, oh, this has a lot of life and personality and it's. it feels like it was touched by human hands and then you play the game for two seconds and you look at the visuals and you're like, this looks like it was compromised <laughs> by like executive dis- yeah, like ex- decisions. executive decisions that engine though and that engine's good oh great fucking engine i mean you know gorilla engine i think a, a good engine doesn't mean a good game no. <laughs> or, an, or an interesting game uh, and vice versa a bad engine doesn't mean a bad game but um no but Miles Morales is getting his own spin-off Spider-Man game and there was a lot of initial confusion as to how what this game was for PS5. It is a full-on new game featuring Miles as the main character. And I say this is a good segue from the Fortnite and pissing off racist thing because I felt like PS4 Spider-Man was very very cop reverent. So much. You're working with police and the whole time. It's nuts. I get that like Spidey's history with the police in the comics depends wholly on how the writer chooses to use the yeah. police in that story. Yeah. Uh sometimes they are diametrically opposed, sometimes they are not. Sometimes I they don't it. want you to fuck their daughter. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes for 30 years, <laughs> for 30 years, you keep coming back around to uh, two particular cops and how important they were. Sometimes you release a trade paperback exclusively about the death of a cop and how it affected Spider-Man. Sometimes. I get it. Yeah. Spider-Man's relationship with the cops in the comics is contentious and up for debate because there are a lot of characters in his stories that are police. He has a different relationship with one with each he, he's a vigilante. character depending there's, on the writer. There's clearly going to be some kind of police yeah. involvement at some point. Exactly. Inevitable, regardless inevitable. regardless of whether or not it's an, through animosity or yeah, otherwise. It's, it's just... Yeah. But that PS4 Spider-Man game 
where Spider-Man is swinging around New York City going, Spider-Cop, Spider-Cop. <laughs> Spider-Man, you're not supposed certain... to deep-throat the boot. I know, made me very uncomfortable. I'm like, this is the bootlickiest Spider-Man of all time. In a game that honestly, like, plays it plays off of his relationship with Yuri Watanabe yeah. as, like, a kind of, like, a difficult, like, we are allies of circumstance mm-hmm. thing. And I'm like, okay... But why does Spider-Man want to be a cop so badly? <laughs> like, if you're not going to go the whole way and depict Spider-Man's vigilantism and policing as, like, diametrically opposed belief systems and ideological approaches to crime fighting, you could at least not have Spider-Man be, like, the biggest bootlicker yeah. ever. And they really did. And it's, like, the one negative smear on a game that I think is really good otherwise. So it's very, like, it pissed me off. Mm -hmm. Uh, So anyway, Miles Morales, the big thing about Miles is that his father is a police officer. Yeah. So obviously he has a very, he's, you could write a very potentially interesting character out of that. And in the comics, in the Ultimate comics, they do do a really good storyline about when when Miles' father finds out Miles is Spider-Man, he is not fucking happy. He, like, for a period, disowns Miles, like, straight up. And it's it's pretty horrible. Like it's a very they go into a lot of it. Bendis is like a, you know, he's not everybody's favorite Spider-Man writer. He did write the character for twenty years, so I feel like he knows what he's doing occasionally. And I think that the idea of making Miles a black Spider-Man, oh, well, half black, half Hispanic Spider-Man, um, the son of a police officer, is very different because it puts him on another side of the law. I think they're gonna. I mean, they're gonna. They're probably gonna have to rewrite something. Because this well, game I mean, clearly... there, I, there's there's definitely going to be some rewrites involved in the yeah, game for sure. This game Just, was clearly I mean, all media now, regardless before. of whether or not, yeah, regardless of whether or not, like that piece of media is like just like there's no way to to like do it without making it bootlicky media. Yeah, there's all like all these cop shows now are like reexamining. Isn't even Brooklyn Nine Nine doing. doing something? Yeah, Brooklyn Brooklyn Nine Nine. I mean, I don't. I have I have mixed feelings about that Word. show, particularly because it is like very. It's, it's copaganda. It's like a. Pro, it feels like a copaganda psyop when I watch it. Yeah, that's what it you're feels like. Haha, like. These guys are so relatable, and they're. Ah, ah, nah, no. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. They're police. Yeah. Um, it's something that like is actually now. Sorry for the digression. It is related, I promise. There's a very good video made recently by Leon Thomas of Renegade Cut about the depiction of police in sitcoms, in in black sitcoms in particular, versus how they're depicted in primarily white sitcoms. Yeah. And that is a good watch if you want to talk about the pervasiveness of police reverence in media that is targeted towards a primarily white demographic. It just, it gets, it's, if you don't understand why people call pieces of fiction copaganda, watch that. But, um, it's very good, Renegade Cut, and I think it's called Black Cop Shows Warned Us or something like that. Uh, good video. But, um, at any rate, yeah, they're gonna have to kind of rewrite some stuff, I think, into this Miles game. Because in in the first Spider-Man game, spoilers for people who haven't played uh, the Insomniac Spider-Man yet, uh, Miles' father dies. So Miles doesn't have a dad and in this Spider-Man universe. Mm-hmm. But I so like maybe that kind of nipped a lot of storytelling opportunities in the bud. But it also means that there's less room for them to fuck up. Yeah. So what they really need to do now is just like make sure that the way that they depict the police, especially the NYPD, a notoriously racist and corrupt police department. They need to be really careful, especially because Marvel prides itself on being like the superhero stories that are relatable and set in the real world. Well, guess what? Most of the real world in the United uh, in the United States in particular, but everywhere, police over policing is a problem all across the world. But in the United States in particular, over policing is a very, 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 very overt racial issue. And police off like the police system from like the ground up is extremely corrupt and needs to be dismantled Mm -hmm. like entirely defunded dismantled maybe even abolished if you're like me and you think to that extreme but um 
Yeah, get like honestly, fuck, fuck. In my opinion, get them the fuck out of here. I, I uh, no more cops. I don't want to get political, but kill cops. <laughs> yeah, not That's... not not to be political on our on our explicitly leftist video yeah. game podcast, but abolish the cops. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, if this game wants to be sensitive it it's going to need to start thinking about things otherwise it's interesting that they're doing this i'm happy that miles is getting his yeah. time in the and sun it's also now because... like i think it's nice that this was clearly kind of at least a little bit in development before things popped off it totally was and it totally like, was because had this came out in like four more months like the trailer i would have been like Pe- oh this is a weird cash grab you're gonna and if, if you know yeah. it would have felt extremely performative yeah. i have no doubt that this was this has probably been on the works since like spider-verse hit really yeah big. yeah that's what i'm thinking too especially just yeah and miles is in the first game as like a pretty like a pretty like they do his whole origin exactly story. so so like they've been setting this shit up for at least a pretty per little while but um what i really i'm excited about is the prospect of it kind of being a smaller game too because not because I don't think Miles deserves a big game, obviously he does, but because I think the results of AAA studios pouring their resources into smaller projects have honestly been really positive. And a good example is that Uncharted um, like game that they made right after they made the last one. That was just like a really good self-contained adventure story with a lot of great character beats and storytelling moments and stuff like that. I think just I like the idea of AAA studios pouring their resources into smaller projects because the maximalism of trip of the AAA video game industry is sometimes too much and it stifles a lot of good ideas mm-hmm. and a lot of things get lost in translation or a lot of things feel like an afterthought. So in a smaller game that, you know, already has all of its mechanics kind of established by the previous game, you have more of an opportunity to, to tell like a very directed coherent narrative and like i said it's it, it, you know potentially will be free of the the very maximalist aesthetic that i think is commonplace amongst all triple a game studios nowadays and something that i personally find to be a huge turnoff uh so it's interesting to see how they're going to navigate that it's it's a very politically loaded game now whether they like it or not it all kind of always was but now especially um one i guess two more things no more heroes 3 got its first like proper gameplay footage yeah. but suda's fucking head was in front of the thing the whole damn time was it i didn't see that shit yes. i just saw the trailer after uh, after uh... so the tra- the trailer came out and the trailer was really good that came out uh a little while ago it was like a they kind of like it was like a little trick oh the almost. gameplay they were okay, like, yeah the gameplay trailer no no yeah. okay i, but I the didn't ga- see the gameplay yeah. thing yet but the gameplay trailer came out during that kind of thing that they were doing. All those kind of second, you know, like second party developers were doing all like their their stuff together yeah. on th- second and third party groups, kind of announcing all their games for these new consoles that like you know Capcom and uh, you know Platinum and all of them. But um, yeah, Suda and Grasshopper did theirs for No More Heroes three, and Suda was fucking sitting in front of the gameplay footage, his big fucking noggin, blocking all the view of what we could see. Um, <laughs> So it's like almost like thank you for the food, Suda san, but also get your fucking, fucking head your out of the way. Why is your hand in my move, spaghetti? Huh? Move your damn head, I want to see. But uh that was really funny and it just made me more hyped to see more gameplay footage, honestly. Mm-hmm. And one more thing that I thought was really interesting. So there is a Crash Four coming out. Yes. They've kind of had some listings for it pop up before the official announcement, but Activision and I believe Toys for Bob, who are the people that made like the Skylanders games, they also did the uh, Spyro Reignited trilogy, um, and I believe they did the um, they they did work on the other Crash game. Like they they worked on the um, the Insane trilogy. Yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, because uh, they're de- they're developing a brand new Crash. Game. Hopefully, it's better. Yeah, and the thing. So what are your feelings on the Crash games post the first three? Uh, my experience with Crash, honestly, is the first one. Uh. <laughs> um, Crash Team Racing for a bit, but not too much. I don't really like that game. I think people who like it are wrong. 
about which kart racer is the best kart racer because it's clearly Mario Kart. I'll fight you. Come on, yeah. at me. Hon- actually, honestly, the the people the people who say like like it's not. Firstly, it's not PS One era anymore. CTR was better than Mario Kart sixty four, but Diddy Kong Racing was also better than Mario Kart sixty four. And I don't even think that's a great game. So that's not saying yeah. Much. Exa- that's the, anyway. <laughs> Mario Kart sixty four is one of the most overrated games of all time. But Mario Kart. I'd now rather play Mario Kart sixty four the... than I'd ra- Crash team yeah i'd play mario kart any day than that fucking new version of ctr they put out which was not anyway good. um but anyway yeah okay so ctr on the first crash CTR is basically and, your experience uh, the game boy color spyro cross bullshit that they did oh yeah game boy advance yes, one that's spyro advance one. purple yeah, and no crash, crash purple, purple spyro, spyro orange, orange. Yep. well those games fucking suck yeah oh my god those games are bad with a capital those B. level designs um, were fu- like i shit. was i was a child and i was like this is bad who did this yeah, this is dog who drew shit this? Like did a dog child shit. draw this in the you know room I, you know what i really dislike about those games uh well the, the, the well that's really bad but um the the other two um like crash handheld games are like decent <laughs> And the Crash Spyro one in particular are just so bad, yeah. like egregiously bad. Well, I mean, Crash, uh, the Spyro Crash handheld seems games to be the are not good either. Of Sonic. He is, and lo- I mean, literally the the down to like the developmental history of Crash, where they were calling it Sonic's ass game, yeah, for a while, just because the game has you looking at Crash's ass. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I I really like the Crash games. I actually they were like some of my favorite games growing up. I used to go to get my hair cut at a place in ndg that my father's friend owned yeah and they had a ps1 there with crash 3 warped and guess what i would play every time i got my hair cut uh so i fucking love the crash games like just purely out of nostalgia but when i finally started owning consoles i bought some crash games and the crash games i bought were wrath of cortex (laughs) (laughs) Which which is like the first attempt at making a crash 4 yeah and um and the handheld Crash game for Game Boy Advance, which is uh, the second one. It's Crash and Trance. Yeah. I think I which watched is, okay. one of my exes play Wrath of Cortex, but I never I never touched it myself. I really like the... Not a good, yeah. not a good game. That game has... If, you, if you've played that game as a kid and you enjoyed it, I dare you go back now and say you oh, like that, it. I dare you. There's so many games like that, though. There's, it is tantamount to torture. It is not good. Yeah. It's... Like, it, <laughs> it, it, I'd honestly play any rare game over that. There's, I'd play DK64 yeah, there's, over there's Wrath of Cortex. There's many games where it's like, uh, people will be like, oh, I want to go back and play this. I'm like, do yourself a favor, don't. Because I did. Or do yourself a favor, do. No, 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 no. no keep, keep, your, keep, your, keep your wholesome memories. Keep your, keep your good memories of the game. I say keep your good memories, but also if you have to learn a hard lesson sometimes. Yeah, you know. I guess. I For me, it's more like, you know, if you want to hold on to that good feeling you had, don't replay it because it's not yeah. going to stay. It's not going to. And certainly don't play any of the new Crash and that's why, games. Like that's why I like telling people ones. that uh, Conquer sucks because everyone's like, what are you talking about? It's so good, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, when's the last time you played it? Like, actually played it. 1990s yeah, age. Like, shut yeah, up. Like... Exactly. Shut your mouth. <laughs> sit down i played it yesterday and i hated it it's not good (laughs) that game fucking it did not that game is so made for like people who think south park is funny in 2020 like yeah (laughs) that's who it's for it's for it's for those people so you know no thanks Uh, but um yeah (laughs) fucking (laughs) poop poop pee pee like yeah i find poop poop pee pee funny too but guess what it's funnier when eric andre does it i don't care (laughs) (laughs) everything's funnier when eric andre i want i want eric Eric andre Andre shit shit himself get eric andre to play but i will not play the stupid poo poo no make eric andre play crash i'm sure it'll be fine oh no okay well last piece of news oh yeah Uh, Mike Z, the coder for Skullgirls, is canceled. So Skullgirls is canceled. Oops. Uh, what happened? I mean, I I oh. a lot of people oh. got canceled in the games industry the oh, other no, day. It's popping off. It, it's like it's it's oh, popping yeah? off live. Uh, so I guess we'll Uh-oh. get to that next time when I have more. Yeah, I we can actually we could probably dedicate a whole episode to just examining the who's who of who got canceled in gaming yeah. over the pandemic because uh, oh boy, were there a lot of people. Uh, we could even do a bonus round on that. Oh my that. god, that would that would be 
Yeah. But um, get, at any get rate, those accountability uh, processes hey. started. <laughs> yeah, honestly, hold 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 people in the industry accountable. Yeah. The comics book industry, in the film industry, in the games industry, powerful people in powerful positions who use their powerful positions to abuse, groom, and harm yeah. people, and then deserve to be fucking outed. Like I can, yeah. I can get behind someone who's doing a very good accountability process, but if you're gonna sit there and fucking bullshit your shit and yeah. def- like just be defensive as fuck and not like not own up to the uh, fucked up shit when, you did when, then fuck you yeah when when people downplay the harm that they've done by going oh i never thought i had that kind of power I'm not, because i i'm not i'm that a person small fry anymore. i'm not harvey weinstein and yeah. like yeah i know you're not a fucking harvey weinstein but guess what in your industry which is not as big as the film industry you are still in a position of significant power and influence and you use that position of power and influence to harm other people and to take advantage of them and to exploit them, maybe even to sexually assault them. So you're a piece of fucking garbage. Yep. However you look at it, it does not matter how much quote unquote power or influence you have in the grand scheme of things or in the grand scheme of the entertainment industry. It's fucking disgusting and you are pathetic. Like, you're a sick piece of shit and st- don't deflect. Take responsibility for your fucking actions and shut the fuck up. Like, it's really. It's so. It's 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 crazy how much that's difficult for me. Seriously, people to honestly, it's own it, step the fuck back. That's it. That's, yeah. that's literally all you have to do for to not yeah. get cancel and... cultured or whatever the fuck people want to yeah. call Can... it. Exactly. It's the cancel culture is not fucking real. It's called holding people accountable yeah. for their fucking actions. There's no such thing as fucking cancel culture. That's just some bullshit. That's like some, reactionary yeah, conservative some right-wing scare bullshit tactic. That, yeah, it's yeah. conservative scare tactic. It's bullshit. Anyway. But anyway, that's I guess that's enough game punks for today. But that was a good return to form. We did it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, we'll be back soon with more Game Punks, with Bonus Round, and also with Touch Generation. Yeah. So I hope you guys tune into that. If you want to follow us on Twitter, you can give us a follow on Twitter. If you want to follow us on uh, Facebook, we've got a Facebook page. We have a Discord if you're interested. We have. We could um, probably get an Instagram going y- at some point. Yeah, we definitely could. We have a uh, we have a wonderful YouTube channel that uploads all of our stuff to listen to. But we have a mega folder if you want downloads yep. of them to listen to on your telephone. Once, uh, we're working on an RSS feed. Once finances <laughs> come back, we're gonna get an RSS feed. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, thankfully, I've realized how inexpensive they yeah, are. Yeah, so. no, it's actually it's actually pretty good. Um, so yeah, we'll try to get the stuff up on you know Apple and on Spotify yeah. and whatever podcatchers you use. Uh, but in the meantime, thank you very much for listening to us. Uh, we are Game Punks. I am Ryan. Uh, that is Ben. <laughs> I am Ben. He is Ben. I have been Ben <laughs> since I've you been, have been born. Ben. Ben. Bod. Ben. <laughs> he has been Ben. I have been Ben. And I will continue and, uh, to bin Ben. You continue to <laughs> bin Ben. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Hope you guys have a good week. Uh, remember to you know wash your fucking hands. Stay six feet apart from one yeah, another. Wear your fucking Don't masks. be fucking animals. Wear your fucking wear, mask. Wear your goddamn mask for fuck's just, sake. Just fucking wear it. Uh, Don't go to the bars and, that are uh, opening. Just don't do it. Yeah, and if you know if you're feeling sick, stay inside. Self quarantine. Be responsible. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.